Good morning, and welcome to morning prayer at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church in Tequesta, Florida, on this Wednesday, May 25th, 2022. My name is Kathy Hawken, and I am part of the morning and evening prayer service group from Good Shepherd. We Zoom live every day at nine o'clock. To join on Zoom, simply go to goodshiponline.org, click the drop down worship tab, and under that you will find prayer. Click on prayer, and if you scroll down, you'll see a picture of a pews with prayer books in them. And if you click on that, it brings you to our live Zoom service. Underneath that, you will find the uh, liturgy that we follow each day. It's done by day and you can also download that. This is Zoomed live at nine, as I said, and then is available after 10 o'clock on all of the media places, YouTube, Facebook, and of course on the goodship.org online page. You can also call the church. So on this beautiful morning with fluffy clouds out my window, let us begin. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And just before we get into our main thing today, I think we all um, are have the thoughts have the thoughts and prayers of which, and unfortunately that, that statement has become kind of useless, but we are sending our prayers to all of those people in Texas. And I would say major prayers to those who have the ability to make a difference and yet have not. Please, dear God, give them the backbone to do something that will stop this senseless loss of young lives, of any life, but particularly of those darling children. It is, um, it is heart-wrenching, heartbreaking, and dear Lord, we need your help to get us through this. Please give us that help that we may know and do your will. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Let us say together the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 119, verses 97 through 120. Oh, how I love you, law, your law, all the day long, it is in my mind. Your commandment has made me wiser than my enemies, and it is always with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your decrees are my study. I am wiser than the elders because I observe your commandments. I restrain my feet from every day, every evil way, and I may keep your word. I do not shrink from your judgments because you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste. They are sweeter than honey to my mouth. Though through your commandments, I gain understanding. Therefore, I hate every lying way. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of my lips and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand. 
yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. I hate those who have a divided heart, but you, your law do I love. You are my refuge and my shield. My hope is in your word. Away from me, you wicked. I will keep the commandments of my God. Sustain me according to your promise that I may live. And let me not be disappointed in my hope. Hold me up and I shall be safe. And my delight shall be ever in your statutes. You spurn all those who stray from your statutes. Their deceitfulness is in vain. In your sight, all the wicked of the earth are but dos. Therefore, I love your decrees. My flesh trembles with dread of you. I am afraid of your judgments. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson is continuing with Leviticus chapter 26. The Lord said to Moses on Mount Sinai, but if, despite this, you disobey me and continue hostile to me, I will continue hostile to you in fury. I, in turn, will punish you myself sevenfold for your sins. You shall eat the flesh of your sons and you shall eat the flesh of your daughters. I will destroy your high places and cut down your incense altars. I will heap your carcasses on the carcasses of your idols. I will abhor you. I will lay your cities waste will make your sanctuaries desolate, and I will not smell your pleasing odors. I will devastate the lands so that your enemies who come to settle in it shall be appalled at it. And you and I will scatter among the nations, and I will unsheath the sword against you. Your land shall be a desolate desolation and your cities a waste. Then the land shall enjoy its Sabbath years as long as it lies desolate, while you are in the land of your enemies. Then the land shall rest and enjoy its Sabbath years. As long as it lies desolate, it shall have the rest it did not have on your Sabbaths when you were living on it. And as for those of you who survive, I will send faintness into their hearts in the lands of their enemies. The sound of driven leaves shall put them to flight, and they shall flee as one flees from the sword, and they shall fall through though no one pursues. They shall stumble over one another as if to escape sword though no one pursues and you shall have no power to stand against your enemies. I apologize. No, I have to find it. Against your enemies shall devour you. And those of you who survive shall languish in the land of your enemies because of their inequities. Also, they shall languish because of the inequities of their ancestors. But if they confess their inequity and the inequity of their ancestors in that they committed treachery against me, and moreover, they continue hostile to me, so that I in turn continue hostile to them and brought them into the land of their enemies, if then the circum uncircumcised heart is humbled and they make amends for their inequity, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and I will remember also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham and I will remember the land, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together the third song of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has drawn upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the people. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson is from Matthew chapter 22. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that da David by the spirit calls him Lord saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he, this be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now let us say together the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord of God, Israel. He has come to the people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant, David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins in the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Now let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended in the dead and he was crucified. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us in your Holy Spirit. So this morning we are uh, recognizing that we're commemorating Beatty, the venerable priest and historian. And what my faithful little uh, research on him said is, Beatty was one of the greatest scholars of the Anglo-Saxon period. He produced a large number of works on subjects as varied as science, music, poetry, and biblical commentary. But he is most famous for his 
a classical history of the English people, one of the best written sources for early English history. For this reason, Beatty is sometimes regarded as the father of English history. And he was uh, named venerable very early, which is not normal. So that also made him special. So today we will commemorate him during our colleagues. The colic of the day is from the sixth Sunday of Easter. Oh God, you have prepared for those who love such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we loving you in all things and above all things may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Rogation Day, and uh, that is a term that I probably should look up too, um, but it says stewardship of creation, which would make me believe that it is taking care of the world in which we live. Oh, merciful creator, your hand is open wide to satisfy the needs of every living creature. Make us always thankful for your loving providence and grant that we, remembering the account that we must one day give, may be faithful stewards of your good gifts through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. And now a colic to commemorate Beatty, the venerable priest and historian, 735. Almighty God, who has enriched your church with the learning and holiness of your servant Beatty, grant us to find in scripture and disciplined prayer, the image of your son, our savior, Jesus Christ, and to fashion our lives according to his likeness, to the glory of your great name and the benefit of your holy church. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but we may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And another prayer for guidance. Very appropriate for today. Direct us, O Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favor and further us with your continual help. That in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name and finally, by your mercy, obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ in all denominations, but particularly those throughout the Anglican Communion, remembering today especially the Diocese of Los Angeles Episcopal, the Right Reverend Harvey Taylor, Diocesan Bishop. We also pray for our Diocese of Southeast Florida and our Bishop, the Right Reverend Peter Eaton, and our companion diocese, remembering today especially the Diocese of Haiti, the Right Reverend Jean Jacques Dursan Bishop. Now let us say together a prayer for mission. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray for our own parish family and those dear to them, remembering today especially Hank, Pam, Tom, Sally, Mary, Cindy, Arlene and family, Jackie, Jeff, and Elaine. We also pray for our GROW ministries, remembering especially the Episcopal way the church members new or returning to the Episcopal church may be received into the church or reaffirm their baptismal vows and good shepherd seep team that the parish may see, serve future generation by levering, leveraging the resources of the consortium of endowed Episcopal parishes. A prayer for clergy and people. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom comes every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and other clergy, 
upon the congregations committed to their charge, the healthful spirit of your grace, and that they may truly please you. Pour upon them the continual dew of your blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. And at this time, we invite your prayers of petition, intercession, and thanksgiving, either shared with all or held in the silence of your heart. And um, I am happy to report that we, on Wednesdays, the Hank we're praying for is my brother-in-law. And he uh, got some good reports yesterday that he will be able to get the new valve in uh, a timely manner. So we're very thankful for that. So I thank you for your continued prayers for Hank. He is a really great guy. You guys would all like him. And we have prayed for the souls of all those children. We just have to continue those prayers and continue to hope and pray that brighter minds will prevail. Um, it, it, seems, it seems hard to visualize, but we can't give up hope and we have God as our guide. And so we will continue to pray and ask him to give us the answer. And hopefully an answer that we like. So now as we conclude today, let us say together a prayer of St. Christostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised to your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning. A uh, small group, but uh, certainly uh, a very good one. And we are blessed. Um, we truly are. I am so thankful for all of you. Have a wonderful day. And remember, be kind. Joan will be here tomorrow.